Hallelujah. Let me share a few moments this morning. I shared last night at our New Year's Eve party and worship and word and prayer time. Well, it was a fun time last night. Started at 9 and finished at midnight. Had a good time, those of us that were out. And um, <clears throat> we were talking later and uh, said to Danielle and Melody, some of the other organizers, uh, I said, we're thinking about a little different time next year. And they said, yes, yes, so are we. And I said, like, maybe start at 10. And they said, no, start like at 7 or 8. And I'm, uh, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> um, we want more time for more fun and more fellowship. It was a good, good time. We'll, we'll see next year what we do. But great, great time last night. I did share last night that God has taken me to this scripture, portion of scripture, every single day for the last two months. Did you hear what I said? Now, I have a Bible reading plan I've followed since I was 13 or 14, and uh, I read five Psalms a day, one proverb a day, three chapters in the Old Testament, one chapter in the New Testament. That gets you through the Psalms and Proverbs 12 times a year and through the whole Bible more than once a year. That's a good plan. But in addition to that Bible reading, the Lord has taken me to Isaiah 61 every morning for the last two months. I've been reading this, and God's been stirring my spirit. So if God does anything in your preacher, you know he's going to do it in you too. Maybe you're already there, but I'm catching up with you. But I'm telling you, this is where this church is going. This is what this church is reviving. This is what this church is going to be in 2017. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Maybe we'll park there for a month. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The child of God who realizes that, lives that, speaks it, walks in it, walks in the miraculous. Most children of God are praying, Oh, Spirit of God, someday, sometime, somewhere, somehow, won't you just bless me for five minutes? <laughs> Here's what the Word says. The Spirit of of the Lord God is upon me. Some Pentecostal believer, why don't you say that with me this morning? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Not maybe, not someday, not somehow, not maybe if I get over there, not maybe if I try harder. Right now, right here, I feel the Spirit of the Lord God upon me. Somebody help me preach this morning. Because... <laughs> Because, why is the Spirit of the Lord God upon me? Because He has, He has, what is that? Is that present tense? Is that future tense? What is has? He has. English teachers, help me. That is past tense, right? That is already done, accomplished, finite, accompli. It is, it is already in place. Because He has anointed me. When were you anointed? You were anointed a few times, children of God. You were anointed the moment you were saved. The Spirit of God came to dwell upon you. You were a moment, you were anointed when you were baptized. How many have been baptized? You were anointed when you were baptized. You were anointed every time you said, yes, Lord. You, I believe you were anointed every time you sang, I surrender all. The Lord heard that. He took it seriously, and he offers fresh. You were anointed the day you received the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, somebody say glory to God. I am anointed. I have been anointed. We may not get through four verses this morning. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, is upon me, because the Lord has. An Who anointed you? The preacher, your father, the prophet, no, the Lord has anointed me to do what? To preach good news to the poor. The gospel is good news to people who don't have enough. The gospel transforms communities. You take a drug-addicted, alcoholic, womanizing wretched man, <laughs> and get him saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, 
What's the first thing he wants to do? He wants to get right with God and everybody. The second thing he wants to do is get a job and provide for his family. And like the, like the country song, back mask, what do they call that? Reverse mask. A country song, back mask, reverse mask. What do they call that? You get your house back, you get your wife back, you get your dog back. Hallelujah. Country song backwards. He sent me to preach, to proclaim, to declare. Thank God for preaching. There's talking. There's teaching. There's sharing. And sometimes there's good old-fashioned preaching. Might do a bit of that this morning. To preach good news to the poor. Good news to the poor is you don't have to stay poor. You don't have to stay in debt. You don't have to stay sick. You can be blessed and healed and prospered. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You want a job where you'll never run out of customers? Ask God to anoint you to heal the brokenhearted. Because Satan is the full-time heartbreaker. He's the full-time discourager. He's the full-time dream destroyer. Satan never sleeps, and every moment he's awake... He's trying to break someone's heart. So all around you, people you know, people you work with, people you drive the bus with, people you see outside your house, people at the post office, are broken hearted. And it doesn't take a genius to find out. Just look in someone's eyes. You say they're a candidate for the good news of a healer named Jesus. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. This is your calling. This is my calling. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer, this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is what we're supposed to be active in. This is our job description. How many of you ever got a job and, and they never told you what you're supposed to do? That was frustrating, wasn't it? Show up. You're learning the job. You stood there. That was embarrassing. No, you want a job description. What, what would it look like if I did my job good for you, right? You want to know. This is the job description for every believer. This is what we're supposed to be about. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Do you know any bound people? Any people in chains? I'm not talking about literal slavery. But, but sometimes that, 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 that kind of spiritual or emotional or psychological slavery is, is, so, is so wounding to a heart. Broken and can't fix themselves. Bound and, and, and stuck with chains and, and addictions and ways of thinking. Mm. We are sent to proclaim freedom! <laughs> freedom! <laughs> Proclaim freedom to the captives. Mm. The opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I, I've got to, I'm, I'm going to, we'll, we'll be back here, okay, over the next few weeks. So, The opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's the year of freedom, debt cancellation, Lands given back, property given back, slaves were set free. That's the year of supernatural freedom. That's the acceptable year of the Lord. The day of vengeance of our God. Any of you ever look at this world and say, something's not right? <laughs> There's a day of vengeance of our God coming. God is going to have the last word. There is a day of judgment coming. We've got to repent and get right so that we're on the wrong side of God's judgment. I want to be on this side looking over as God deals with this world, not on this side looking up at what's coming on me because I was, was rebelling against God. The day of vengeance over God. See, that's part of our message. Did you under this is our job description, right? This is what we're supposed to be doing. And so many churches only, only uh, skip this part. There's a day of vengeance coming. You've got to get right with God. 
There's a day of reckoning coming. There's a day when all accounts with God will be settled. I'm glad my account was settled at the cross. Can you say glory to God? To comfort all who mourn. See, it's not just a simple job description. Don't just stand here. Don't just sit here and answer the phone. You're supposed to be comforting people who are mourning. Wiping people's tears away. Sharing hope and love in Christ. To preserve those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. See, thousands of years ago when people were mourning, they didn't just wear black. They took ashes from a fire and, and wiped their faces, their forehead, their cheeks with it. They wanted everybody to know, I am hurting. So what our job is, is to find something beautiful and say, hey, I want to exchange your ashes for this beauty. To give them the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. See, we are to be a fashion designer to a broken world. Hey, I see you wearing rags of, of mourning and hurt and pain. I want to put on you a spirit of joy, a garment of praise. How do you, I think that looks good on you. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Now, as I asked last night, can anybody imagine with me, just think, not a trick question, what kind of tree, what kind of fruit does a lemon tree produce? Lemons, right. What kind of tr- fruit does an orange tree produce? What kind of tree does an apple tree produce? So then, therefore, what kind of tr- fruit does a righteousness tree produce? Righteousness. They will be called, these people that are healed, that's us doing the healing for them. That's those who need healing. They, we all, will be called trees of righteousness. Why would God, God call you a tree of righteousness? Why would God call me a tree of righteousness? Because he wants the fruit that we produce of our lives to be right fruit, right thinking, right talking, right moods, right attitudes, right actions, right praying, right singing, doing the right things constantly because we're planted in rivers of living water and the fruit that we bear is fruits of righteousness. Not of our own works, but the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, bless God. That the Lord might be glorified. And then, here's what happens. If we start doing our job, if we show up for work, because we're anointed, we're empowered, we're equipped. That's what anointed means. It means equipped, authorized, and empowered, okay? You're anointed. In other words, you got the tools now. We gave you the truck. We gave you the badge. We gave you the identity. We've trained you. Okay, go and do the work. That's what, that's what anointing means. Anoint, everybody say, anointing means I got the truck and the tools. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got the stuff needed. I, I know how to do this. I don't know how, but he shows me how. Here's what happens then. Verse 4 of Isaiah 61. This is what I've been reading every morning for two solid months. They shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. I'm telling you that there's a lot of things broken down in America. There's a lot of things wounded and, and needing a whole lot of fixing. And one of the ways we realize that America is so broken is because so many people in America don't even realize it's broken. I start my mentoring program next week in one of the neediest areas in our community teenagers who don't know who the dad is and haven't seen their mom in a long time and they need somebody to talk to. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to comfort those who mourn. I'm going to break strongholds in their lives. Do you know that without me even preaching to them, my presence in their life 
can bring healing, bring hope, bring a new direction, bring a smile. (laughs) There's people all around you that need you to be that full of Christ that your presence brings help and healing. We're a Pentecostal church. We believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit. We believe in signs and wonders, healings and miracles. And we don't only just believe in them. We see them, praise God. Look at Tim over there, dying man. Look at him now. Did you take the offering this morning? You went somewhere else. Did you receive the offering? You were an usher. You went to the bathroom. He couldn't go to the bathroom two years ago. He was in church this morning and went to the bathroom. Somebody say glory to God. Jim Gray Sr. back there in church this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Um, i got to tell you this miracle, this miracle. Um, Nadine, Nadine Parker, married a man, didn't believe in God, hadn't been in church in years. He had a near-death experience last week in the hospital. They sedated him, put him in a coma so that they could put a breathing tube down his neck they said, it's, it's not looking good. Nadine was sick, couldn't get over. She said, can you get to see him? I said, I'm in Tulsa, but I'll stop on my way by the hospital. I stopped on my way home. Was it Tulsa? Where was I? Branson. Branson. Stopped on my way home in St. Louis. Beep, 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 beep. <sighs> breathing machine doing his breathing. The nurse said to me, as the nurses and the doctors always say, He can't respond. He can't hear you. I said to myself, you want to bet? Because I've been going to hospitals and visiting deathbeds since I was 13 years of age, more than 40 years. And my dad, the faith-filled preaching pastor that he is, always trained me, you never talk to a dying person as if they're not there. Because if their spirit is still there, they're still there, and they probably can hear you. And I can tell you personally stories that I've heard about people making um, funeral arrangements for grandma in her, when she's still alive and she, she came back to a day or two later and said, I heard all that. <laughs> so I've stopped many families. Well, listen, let's, let's talk to Susie. Let's, let's talk to mom. She's right here. So the nurse left the room and I was alone with this man who had been so far from God. And I said to him, listen to me right now. I'm going to tell you how to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. This may be your last moment. I was saying in his ears, I wasn't whispering. I wasn't shouting, but I wasn't whispering either. I said, Jerry, listen to me. This might be your last moment, but you've got to invite Jesus in your heart. You can't say it out loud, but you can say it in your soul Just say, Jesus, I believe you're God's son. I believe you died for my sins. I'm sorry, God. Please wash me. Make me a new person. I'll live for you, God. Have mercy upon my soul. Jesus, I believe I want to serve you. I prayed some more over him. Prayed some of the word over him. I told him, Jerry, nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. you got to believe him right now, Jerry. Believe on Jesus. We're praying for you. The church is praying for you. I will see you later. I left. Two days later, Nadine tells me that he woke up and said to his wife, I've got to serve Jesus now. That is a miracle. That's a miracle. In 2017, we're going to see more and more miracles. I visited with Jerry a couple days later, and he said, uh, I'm just a brand new Christian. I don't know how to do this. And I said, neither do I. Let's learn together. <laughs> We're all following Jesus. He said, I waited so long. I wasted so many years. And I said, Jerry, Jesus told a great story about you. He said, about me? I said, yes, he did. Jesus said, catch this. There's a man that hired a bunch of people first thing in the morning. And then he hired some people at the last hour of the day. And at the end of the day, he paid them all the same. And the guys that were hired at 8 a.m. said, what kind of boss are you? And the boss said, 
None of your business. I'm the boss. I pay the wages I paid. I hired them, promised them a day's wages. I'm going to get, give them what I gave them. I said, God, you're going to get on the same boatload to heaven as I am. You're going to get the same blessing as I am. He smiled and said, that's, that's good news. How many of you got a Jerry in your life, somebody you're praying for? Some, oh, yeah, somebody you're, you're believing for. Stand with me right now. We're going to come to this communion table in a moment, but let's just take a moment to recommit to our calling, to our anointing, to our equipping, to our ministry. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate 2017 to be a year of rebuilding, repairing, and restoring the ministry that you call this house to, the ministry that you called every one of our lives to, Lord. There are Jerry's that are far from you. There are broken hearts and wounded lives and and, and, and folks that are poor in spirit and in actuality that need grace of Christ, need the love of Christ, they need somebody walking in anointing. So today, Lord, we just place our hearts before you. This first Sunday of this new year, God, speak to our hearts. Everybody say with me, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Oh, I'll say it again. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Say that all together now. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Lord, we make that confession of faith. We're not worthy of the anointing. We're not worthy of your covering. We're not worthy of your blessing, Lord. But we have been healed. We have been restored. We have been rebuilt, remade, Lord. We are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he, that you, Lord, may be glorified. Is there anybody in this house that will raise your hand in just a moment's time and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not where I need to be in God. I'm not where I need to be with Jesus. I know he's the Savior of this world. I want him to be my Savior. I want him to be my Lord. Would you pray for me that I could walk my life out to serve Jesus? I need to be born again. I need to be forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, by his love on the cross. One, two, three, raise your hand. Anyone, anyone in this room, God will see you. Anyone in this house, thank you, Lord, for every life. If there's even anybody who doesn't know you, Lord, don't let them leave this house without saying to somebody, I need to follow you. I need to follow Jesus. And I need to make him the Lord of my life.